This is Twit. Now, I want to point yeah. out, we had a little bet going. I don't know if you knew about it, but we had a little bet going uh, about how long this transition was going to take. And I think they, they split down the middle because they said two years. But Ming-Chi Kuo says this year there'll be a 13-inch uh, uh, MacBook Pro. Yeah. That seems reasonable. That sounds about right. Not a MacBook Air, not a MacBook, a MacBook Pro. And that all, Ming-Chi Kuo could be wrong, just a rumor, all of the Macs shipping in 2021 would but have... But don't you think this is a parallel? Because like, Steve Jobs said two years, and they it shipped a MacBook a Pro and an iMac that first year, which is what's year. rumored to be shipping now. Yep. And then it, yep. it took like just under a year. Yep. So I think this is like Scotty from think. the Enterprise, where you over you over promise, <laughs> sorry, you under promise, over deliver, because that's how you get your reputation as a miracle worker. Yep. And I and mm -hmm. I think that there was a lot of uh, impetus to do that because of the slow transition of 64 bit that bit them in the butt. There's so many apps that yeah. don't run on Catalina. They realize you drag it out. Developers go, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, you make this very exciting. You give them lots of incentive and you say, and it's going to happen fast. I thought it was weird that they said, why do you think they said this? And we have still have Intel Max in the pipeline. Because it's true. And it's what happened with Steve yeah. in PowerPC too. They had several PowerPC computers that they still needed to ship. And you Who's don't want to buy that. Player. There are people who well, are very established in their production workflows who they are not going to go anywhere near uh, an Apple Silicon Mac for a year or two until they see okay. exactly how Final Cut is running. So exactly it's reassuring what pre-press. Reassur it. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And they did just do a very expensive Mac Pro. I'd be really pissed if I bought that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They want to make sure that that those Mac, those Intel Mac Pro people don't get angry that there were so any. Pissed. That was the last yeah. one. People want the best but, Intel. But, they don't want the worst ARM. They want the best Intel, and that's what they're these are right now. Right. I I I like the way Apple has. So in this very short timeline of two years and possibly less than two years, that we're that all Macs, uh, the Mac lineup will will move to ARM. That they're also including a lot of tools to help developers and to help users. Um, if that if that app doesn't actually support ARM yet, so there's, you know, the um, uh, the two, virtualization the, Rosetta yeah, two yeah. and um, Universal two. These are these are all tools that help either a developer to quickly transition or help us as a user to get a translated app. So I think that's a great way to let app developers know that we understand this is happening fast. Um, and if you can't get to it in time, yeah. we've got some options. They for even you. said they're going to continue yeah. to support Intel for many years. But uh, yeah. I, I do think it was telling that they named it Rosetta 2 and Universal Binary because I think that's to also reassure you. You know, we've done this yeah. before. Uh, yeah, it worked pretty well. What is what is going to happen to Coco? Are we a lot As of a lot of Coco? Yeah, yeah, a, a lot of pain to developers that had they who felt as though they have a, they, we have to hold on to this part of our code that still uses Cocoa for whatever reason. I, I really think that I think that Apple's going to try to kill it as quickly as possible. I, I don't I mean, think if you're using. Get, I, don't know. I have to say, I sat down. If you're using Swift, you're golden. If well, you, you see, Ali wasn't doing Cocoa, wasn't doing AppKit yeah. um, instead of the yeah, Union. Yeah. It's so, yeah. and he's the AppKit guy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you got to be using Swift UI. You got to be on Swift. But if you are, you're golden. Now, I don't know what percentage of developers have made that move. But wasn't it interesting how they sort of boiled the water for you there? They're like, if you've made a first class iPad app, it'll just run. Yep. It'll run beautifully on the Mac. Yep. But then if you do that one little extra step of clicking that catalyst box and making a few tweaks, you can make it a really good Mac app. And then you and you can make it native. And, you, like, and it's, it's like very easy me. steps. Because what, what do you need catalyst for now? To to make it the Mac, like to give it the Mac style Mac sidebar to to, yeah. to customize the menu bars, yeah, to control the and so they give and the new Catalyst, of Catalyst has pixel by pixel control for right. developers now. So it basically becomes a library, so that you add you can add Macish features. But it's I have a to core say, code within like different interfaces for the different platforms. It's for a developer. This is a very positive story if you're modern. It's not great if you're, yeah. you know, you're doing QuickBooks, but you know, if, <laughs> if your carbon code is still, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. <laughs> okay, and, carbon, you know, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think if you're a developer and you jumped on the Swift bandwagon and you're interested in Swift UI and you started to use that, boy, they were the demos they did. I mean, making a widget. All the widgets, right? They, like they're all, they're all cross-platform Swift UI codes. So you make one widget and you adjust them and they're on every platform. It's gorgeous. 
Yeah. So if yeah. you understand that development mode, if you're comfortable with that, and I have to think that's most of the apps Apple wants anyway. I don't know if it's Microsoft, but obviously that's that's been done. Um, mm. th then you're going to be. It's going to. It should be pretty. It looks pretty easy for you.